I can give you lots of technical and commercial reasons about why Java is so important. But to keep the video small, I will talk only about the most important points. You should take Java seriously because Java is the first object-oriented language which you will be studying. Remember, the C language which you have studied in your earlier semester is not object-oriented. An object-oriented language is the one in which we use the concept of classes and objects. So, if you don't take Java seriously, you will never understand the nitty-gritty of classes and objects. And because of that, you struggle a lot with Python, with JavaScript, and with Android app development in your subsequent semester. Java is also important because Java is widely used for the development of enterprise software. Any big company or organization is called an enterprise and the software which such big companies use is called an enterprise software. For example, the software which is used by a bank, by an airline company and by railways is an enterprise software. And these enterprise software are coded in Java. That's why the demand of Java programmers never decreases. Java is also a preferred choice for development of Android apps. The popularity of Java is evident from the fact that apps like Google Maps, Gmail and Facebook are coded in Java. Because Java is so important, companies ask questions on Java when they come for placement in the final year. Now I want to give you a very important suggestion. It is always a good idea to learn as many programming languages as you can, but you should do it in the right sequence. So what exactly is this right sequence? Ideally, you should first study the C programming language, then Java, then Python, then JavaScript, HTML, CSS, and finally the Android app development. In fact, even the Mumbai University follows this sequence in its curriculum. I have seen so many students not taking Java seriously in their second year, and when they are in their final year, they realize the importance of Java. Then they spend thousands of rupees to do course. Now, don't you think that's absurd? If at all you want to spend money on studying Java, why not do it now and get some good marks in your college practical exams, VIVAS, and you will also have a project internship even before your second year ends. So guys, what are you waiting for? Join the Java integrated course today. Visit the link in the video description to know the course fees and the schedule. My suggestion is that you join as early as possible to get good early bird discounts. Thank you and good luck. Now let's talk a little about the projects which we are going to do in our Java course. So we will be doing a total of 5 projects of which 4 projects I will teach you in the class and 1 project you will do on your own based on which you will get the project internship letter. The four projects which we will do will be online test in Java, employee management system, calculator app and the library management system. Of these four projects, the last two are quite important and you can even submit the last two projects as your college mini project. I hope you know that you will be required to submit a mini project in Java in your college. Now let's have a look at these two projects. So. What I have done is, say this is my NetBeans, alright, by the way, we will be studying NetBeans also in Java. So this is my NetBeans and in NetBeans, I have these two projects, the calculator app and the library management system. Now, first of all, I will show you the calculator app. So I run the calculator app and this is what you will see. So you will see a calculator like this, like this. So now over here, there is a button for on off. See what will happen when I click on off. So when I click on off, everything gets disabled. When I click on on, everything gets enabled. Now let's say I type a number 745. I click on this C, so everything gets cleared. Now again, I type a number 852. Now this is a backspace. So when I click on backspace, only the last digit gets cleared. Now let's do some operations. So 8.6 into 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 4. I click equal to so I get result. Let's say divide by 2. So again I get the result. And finally, if I want to switch off the calculator, I click on off. So this was the calculator app. Now Many colleges may not uh, approve the calculator app because in this particular app, we are not going to use the database. 
however in the entire course i am also going to teach you sql which stands for structured query language i hope you know that structured query language is basically a programming language which is used to create databases so what we'll do is we'll study the sql we'll create databases and we'll connect those databases with our java program Now the last project which we are going to do will be the library management system in which we'll also use the database and i'm pretty sure that a library management system project will be approved by your college as the mini project so if you attend this particular course you don't need to do a separate project for your college you can directly give the library management project as your college project now in this library management project we are going to use the database also now let's see how this will work so again i go to netbeans i select this lms lms stands for library management system and i click on run over here so now when i click on run you will see a login screen like this so let's say i give the user name sandeep and let's say the password 1111 and i click on login so it says invalid username or password okay so either my username or password is invalid by the way here my password was invalid instead of giving 1111 now i'll give 0000 okay and i click on login so when i click on login you will see a screen like this and this screen is the home screen of the library management system by the way what exactly this library management system is so it is basically a software a program which is used for efficient working of a library so this library management system will be used by the college librarian or the employees who are working in the library now on this home screen there are several options so let's say i click on view all books so when i click on view all books i will get a list of all books which are available in the library so for every book will maintain the book id the title of the book the author of the book and the publication all right so if so currently you see four entries over here which means that a library currently has only four books just an assumption just an example now let's say the library is purchasing a new book so we'll click on add a book over here and now we'll add the details about the book so let's say the book id is 1122 the book title is let's say c programming okay the book author is let's say ramesh kumar all right and the book publication let's say at at publication something like that okay now i click on add okay when i click on add it says one book added to database as i told you we'll be using the database also in this project i click on okay Okay when I click on okay see all this also got cleared automatically I click on back and now to confirm that a book is really added I click on view all books so see the book got added 1122 C programming Ramesh Kumar AT publication now let's say I want to search a particular book whether it is there or not that okay so I click on search book now I can search the book using the book id or the title any one of them So let's say I don't remember the book ID, but I type something like one one two three. Actually, it was one one two two, the one which we uh, gave just now. And the book title I remember, it is C program. Now I click on search. So when I click on search, again a table will be displayed, but this time the table will display only the required book. I hope you remember that over here I had typed one one two three, okay? But I gave the title correctly. so what our search will do is it will do the searching based on either the book id or the title if either of them is correct we will get the required book so i got the required book c programming now let's go back over here and let's issue a book okay that means a student may come to the library and the student may tell the librarian that i want so and so book so the librarian will click on issue book so now what the librarian will do The library will enter the book ID. Let's say one one two two. Okay, the student ID. That means the student roll number. Let's say it is nine nine eight eight seven seven. The student name. Let's say it is Amit Singh. And see, I'll click on issue. 
over it says that book issue date and title will be added by system automatically so we don't need to write the book issue date and the title the book issue date will be today's date and the title will be the book title and it will be fetched from the database so i click on issue so it says required book is c programming and that is correct you know that i click on okay all right it says book issued i click on okay and then i click on back now let's say the student comes one fine day and he wants to return a book so the student will return the book the librarian will click on return now what the librarian will do is the librarian will first enter the book id to check whether the fine is there or not there whether the student needs to pay any fine so the librarian will enter 1122 okay and calculate fine so it says number of days zero pay fine zero i hope you remember that a book id 1122 was issued just now so that is why it says number of days zero and the fine is zero by the way for the first 7 days will not charge any fine so i click on okay now uh let's go back and i hope you remember see there was this book 4567 4567 which is data structures okay so now what i will do is i will click on i'll click on return book and i will type over here 4567 and i'll click on calculate fine so what happened is almost two months back almost two months back i had issued this book or i had issued this book called data structures okay and that is why it is telling me number of days is 58 and for one day the fine is 5 rupees so for 58 days the fine is 290 rupees so it tells me that i am supposed to pay this fine don't forget that i am supposed to use a database over here so the database will store everything permanently so two months back i had issued this book so it is still stored that entry is still stored in my database and that is why now i can figure it out that it was issued 58 days back now i click on okay now it is quite possible that a student does not have 290 rupees now so the student may tell the librarian that i'll come later so when the student tells i'll come later librarian will not click on return whenever the student comes again with the fine the librarian will click on return okay and the book will be successfully returned see now the book is successfully returned okay so now i click on okay now i click on back now let's say there is some particular book which got torn or which got stolen and it is no more there in the library so we'll click on delete book again we need to enter either the book id or the title so this time i will give the book id correct and i will purposely give the wrong title i'll give a title cp tppp something like that and i'll click on t so it says number of books deleted one so this one book is the same book which we added today if you want you can again go to view all books and you can check see that book is no more there one one two all right so guys this was our library management system this project you can submit even in your college as a college mini project and i will be teaching you this entire project in fact total of four projects including this one you will also get the source code of this particular project so that's it in the java projects which we are going to do